I don't think we'll learn a great deal. I think what they'll try and do is again balance the notion that while March is clearly off the table and probably April, that June is still a possibility around around that. So. I think they have to do a number of things. They have to clearly, I think, change their dot plots or miles away from uh, where the market expectations are. I've discussed this with you in the past. You know, I think the dot plot plot is crazy. It leads to more confusion, more disruption than, than benefit. Yeah. Um, but you're right about the wage side. I mean, I think the, the wage element, although the labor market is strong, unemployment coming down, uh, turnover picking up, you know, labor costs in terms of wages are still very anemic. Mm -hmm. We saw a modest pickup in, you know, the average hourly earnings, they got up, but then fell back down again to 2.2%. Uh, employment cost index, the Fed's favored measure, back down at 2%. There's not really any wage pressure coming through yet. Um, just on this uh, dot plot, what, what value um, then the dot plot at all at this point, do you think? Because as you say, you know, it's, it's, it's had us all kind of wondering why market expectations and the dot plot have been so yeah. far apart here. Yeah. And obviously the, the, there is a suspicion that the Fed has been somewhat hostage to um, financial market volatility. Sure. Do you think they, they can actually set that aside or, or are they going to stick with that and the dot plot actually has less relevance? Uh, I think they're going to stick with it. But look, you're absolutely right about the market being, or them being held hostage to the market. I mean, I think somewhat of a mistake was made last summer into the autumn when effectively they became beholden to market sentiment that they had to move rates in, in December. Um, that's not what the Federal Reserve of you know, the United States should be doing. The dot plot confusing, um, but I think they'll keep with it for now. They can't really back away. I think they will lower that. But you know they've been wrong most times. It's been the market that's uh, been right. And if you think about this, well, you know, a year ago they thought that growth in the United States would be 2.8 percent. Last year it turned out to be 1.9 percent. This year they're saying 2.4 percent. The market views that more likely to be 2 percent, as as we would as well. So I think a lot of uncertainty, a lot of confusion out there. Um, but I don't think what they're trying to do, which is be very specific, is actually clarifying the situation for investors. Guy, why is it wrong for the Fed to have an ear to the ground on what the market is doing and saying? Because we've seen other central banks go down that path, the ECB, the BOJ. And if you look at the second round effects that the wealth, in fact, can have from Wall Street to Main Street, there is an impact. If Wall Street's selling off, then Main Street does feel a lot poorer. Absolutely. Um, they must keep an eye on the market. They must know what's going on. Uh, the market has been hugely beneficial to the Fed, the cycle, because it's been asset price reflation that has allowed the transmission mechanism to work to some extent. So it is important they still create uh, or listen to what's going on in the market. It is important they adapt policy to that, but they shouldn't be doing it just in that. They need to look at the fundamentals of the economy. They need to look at the fundamentals about inflation and growth, which are their two mandates. But you're right, the start of this year, the market sold off precipitously. This did impact, I think, CEO sentiment in terms of CapEx plans, in terms of spending. It did impact, of course, to consumers in terms of what they were going to do with their, with, their, with their savings. So listen to the markets, take note of it, but don't be dictated by the market moves.